everyone. Welcome to the April 2019 session of Dr. Spotfire. Today we're going to be presenting on text analytics and machine learning and Spotfire and Tipco data science. First, uh, a quick word about Tipco. Tipco is a global technology leader who for the past 20 years has helped thousands of customers across various industries. We've helped enable smarter decision making through data, integration, and uh, augmented intelligence. Whether you need to integrate or analyze, Tipco is here to help you on your digital journey. Here at Dr. Spotfire, our motto is learning is not driven by answers, but by questions. And this month we have something unique. Uh, we are presenting from Singapore for the 2019 Tipco Now Conference. Um, our lab location is here and we have our feature speaker who is presenting from Seattle as well. Uh, the Tipco Now Conference is a uh, global conference this year. So if you guys haven't registered, make sure to ask your account rep or look online at the Tipco Now website. And uh, uh, we have lots of interesting keynote speakers, great events, innovation events, uh, great, great talks. So make sure to check this out and register. Uh, there's an event in Chicago this June and another event in London in September. So uh, today we're in Singapore, which you can see on the bottom left, we're at the Marina Bay Sands, beautiful hotel, great location. So uh, hope you're here. If you're here in Singapore, feel free to stop by the booths and say hi. And here's your Dr. Spotfire crew for today. My name is Neil Canungo. I'll be running the technical session uh, at the end of the Q&A. Um, I'm also the uh, organizer of the page, uh, the, the Dr. Spotfire page. I work with Nanad Sawe to find interesting feature sessions for you and uh, make sure we get your questions answered. Uh, Robert Bashenko and our team helps with the post processing of each session, including great summaries of each session and posting that on the community. And Anya, Anya Perlenko is our campaign manager. She's here to make sure you can register, get reminders, and have access to these sessions afterwards. Today's featured speaker is Monica Cisneros. Monica is a solutions consultant here at TIBCO. Um, she's gonna be using Spotfire and TIBCO data science, and she's gonna demonstrate how to use machine learning for analytics and uh, how to analyze some text data to get some sentiment analysis. Uh, throughout the session, feel free to post any questions you have on the webinar chat. Uh, there's also a Q&A button on the webinar controls and you can post your questions there as well. Uh, with that, Monica, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Okay, so let me start sharing my screen uh, so we can talk about uh, data analytics in Spotfire and in the broad tech portfolio. So um, for today, the use case that we're going to see is um, employee attrition. So uh, we as a company, we gave out a survey uh, for our employees um, to see how they are feeling in our job, right? So for us to be the most effective um, and to, you know, just be um, a, very, a good company, we want our employees to be happy. So uh, part of that is identifying uh, which employees are uh, unhappy and what can we do to first off identify that and second off prevent that. So employee attrition, uh, what it means is that the employees are leaving our company. So uh, in order for us to uh, not have to worry about, uh, you know, looking for overhead, we're looking at, um, just overall happiness of our employees. We want to identify um, exactly what's happening with those employees that are feeling unhappy and to correct that in terms of, um, you know, actions of changing them of teams, giving them a new role of giving them, you know, better benefits uh, or, you know, even uh, having um, training for, the leaders or the managers to make the employees feel better. Okay, so um, in order to do that, we're going to uh, look in our data. In our data, we have our respondent ID, uh, we have the job role that they have, whether it be a manager, individual contributor, team lead, et cetera. And uh, we have three questions that are uh, standardized questions. So, um, one of this is how quickly does your manager look up for um, 
follow up on requests, how well does your employee handle criticism at work, and how realistic are the expectations of your supervisor. In terms of data analytics, when we have standardized questions, it's very easy for us to score them and get quicker into the answers for this. However, when we have non-standardized um, data, for example, a text question, when we have, uh, for example, this um, point in our survey where we have, do you have any other comments, questions, or concerns, it's, um, it is a challenge for uh, businesses to try to identify and pretty much code what's happening in this specific box. And as a business, we do find that this box of comments and questions can be extremely valuable for us of identifying and pinpointing exactly what's happening with our employees, whether they're happy or they're not happy. So what we're going to do today is utilize advanced analytics with typical data science to do text mining and machine learning um, to identify exactly what's happening with those um, what happen in future cases. So um, how are we going to do that? We're going to look at the historical employee profile. Uh, looking at the preliminary view of the work environment in general uh, using the uh, first standardized questions that we see here, um, these three. And then we're going to utilize the advanced analytics with text mining. We're understanding exactly why these employees are leaving using the common box of the question number seven and uh, using machine learning to predict analytics and analyze those future cases. So um, just a, as a credit, uh, to give to um, one of my um, co-workers and really good friends, you know, Manamela. He's the one, he's a data scientist who did um, the, um, the models in typical data science uh, and uh, utilized that data in Spotfire to show you what we have for today. So uh, talking about typical Spotfire and typical data science, so um, as we know, this is uh, Dr. Spotfire, and we are either interested in Spotfire or already know about Spotfire. Uh, but today, I want to also introduce typical data science. Typical data science, um, we have a, um, a, a group of products here at Typico uh, that can be part of this data science journey for, um, for any business. In this case, specifically, we're going to talk about the piece of typical data science called Statistica, where uh, we are able to um, have a low-code or no-code environment for our model. So um, we're now on the next page. I'm going to explain how typical Spotfire and typical data science, in this case Statistica, they work hey, together Monica, and how they're different. Hey, Monica, yeah? sorry to interrupt you, but um, your screen may not be updating. I'm still seeing the uh, Spotfire DXP. Um, yeah, um, okay. so I was about to change to the analytics vision, okay. actually. All right, then. That's Perfect, right. thank you. Uh, can you can you see the circle? Yeah, I can see it now, yep. Excellent. All right, so um, analytics vision. This is, what does this mean for, um, you know, for you and for TIPCO? So uh, here at TIPCO, we want to take you in this analytics journey uh, from the very, very beginning where we're talking about data management for analytics all the way to uh, real-time streaming. Um, in order for us to explain it a little bit better, we separate it into uh, five levels. And the first one, we're going to um, have our data management and analytics where we have uh, products like typical data virtualization. And then from um, two to three, which we are going to focus on today, uh, we have smart visual analytics and uh, data science and machine learning. Now with smart visual analytics, we have typical Spotfire, as most of you already know. It is our BI tool that is AI driven. We have, um, data wrangling available, we have recommendations engine available, um, we can have one-click predictive analytics, dashboarding, and KPIs. So this is the way that we are telling a story um, and how we can convey our information in a logical, visual way for us to be 
um, a lot more effective in the way that we communicate our data. Now, uh, when we um, go a little bit further into number three, where we're talking about data science and machine learning, um, we can also do this with typical Spotfire utilizing our Ter engine. So Ter stands for Typical Enterprise Runtime for R, which is our R engine where we can um, build our scripting uh, to have um, all the models. Now, everything that we're going to see today can also be built in Spotfire uh, using Tear uh, when we can have our, our scripting for text mining. And we also have um, CRAM packages that allow us to uh, build this text mining node a lot better uh, inside of Spotfire. However, today we're going to focus uh, and explain what um, Spotfire data science is, specifically Statistica. So Statistica is a low-code to no-code uh, workplace environment where we have more than 16,000 uh, types of models that are already embedded inside of um, the tool. And Statistica and Spotfire work together very well. They have um, integration uh, within each other via uh, a data function or um, a little bit easier, just importing and exporting data that both of them are uh, compatible with. So um, a little bit more Statistica, we can also build operational models and systems where we can deploy the model and uh, we can do back to execution and we can take actions for optimizing our model. And we can also do um, real time streaming uh, with it. And uh, we other we have other types of uh, products that we can also use with Spotfire in order to get from uh, number one to number five in terms of the analytic vision. So no matter what your use case is, no matter uh, where in your analytics journey you are, um, Tipco has got you covered, and uh, we can take you there. Um, wherever you are. Okay, so um, let's go into the background again. So we're looking at uh, respondent ID, job title, and the three questions. And we have built a dashboard uh, in order to represent that in a visual way. So now in here, I'm looking at um, who my employees are, where, like, what is their job role? And here we have around 400 individual contributors, uh, whereas we have around 121 um, team leads, uh, senior managers, regional managers, etc. So then it um, goes into a um, orderly fashion, and. When we look into the right, and here we are looking at uh, how likely it is that it would recommend the company to a friend or colleague. So then in here, um, we are also using a standardized version of, um, you know, not only how happy the person is, but also to recommend it. Um, now, overall, we see that the distribution of um, how likely for them to recommend it it um, peaks into a neutral to a little bit of a positive uh, side. We here see like, you know, in between a seven and an eight as a peak. And um, we can also look at overall uh, the questions, that, the standardized questions that we were looking at uh, for all employees. So how quickly does the manager follow up on requests? How realistic are the expectations of your supervisor and how well does your employee handle criticism of his work? So um, with Spotfire, we are able to create beautiful visual analytics. Um, we are able to go and look for answers and really go and have a 360 degree view of our data. However, um, it also allows us to drill down into our information. So for example, I want to see exactly how the individual contributor, um, how do they feel? And we see that um, a lot of our employees uh, that are individual contributors uh, are feeling about a seven in the recommending the company. So we are um, coding it as a neutral feel. But when we look at the standardized questions, we see that it's um, mostly green. We see that it's very quickly, very realistic, and very well for uh, all these three questions that we're asking to each of them. Now, um, if we go into the next one, which is the team lead, uh, we immediately see 
uh, in terms of color that um, the team lead is not having a good time. We are having overall a negative response from uh, this group of people. And when the, we're talking about how the manager follow up, it's either neutral or um, bad in how realistic are the expectations. Uh, we have more, you know, we have 42% of um, our team leads saying that it's slightly realistic and about 17.4% that is not realistic at all. That will go above the 50% mark. That means that our team leads are not being happy. Um, so in here, this is where we, a lot of um, our businesses and business analysts, this is where they stop. We're looking at the historical data that has already been coded then um, we have that information, um, you know, we don't really, we know the, you know, what's happening. We understand that there is a problem happening, but we don't understand the why. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, utilize Statistica to look at text analytics and machine learning for us to dive into, the, into that question a lot more. So um, this is uh, Statistica, which is part of Typical Data Science Portfolio. And um, with Statistica, we have a workplace where we can simply drag and drop the different types of um, models that we want to bring into the data. Now, Statistica has more than 60,000 models already embedded in the tool, and we are simply going to select what we want, for example, a random forest classification tree, drag it and drop it, connect it to our data, and we can run this node um, exactly as is with maybe a few configurations to make it do what we want to do. Uh, but as easy as that is, it is to bring a model into Statistica. Now, um, I'm just going to delete it for now and talk about the use case. So, um, our workplace gets divided into two places. On the top, we have the text analytics uh, portion. We have text mining. And then the bottom part, we have our machine learning part. So with the text analytics, we always start with um, our data. So let's go and look into it. And in here, again, we see the exact same data that we saw in Spotify. We're looking at the respondent ID, we're looking at the job role, the three standardized questions. Uh, however, this is where we really want to focus, which is uh, the question number seven of do you have any other comments, questions, or concerns? Now, if we look at the data, um, we can see immediately, for example, in um, the respondent number two, that they say this is a very interesting place to work, the executive team is very cooperative. So us as humans can recognize that, you know, this person's comment is fairly positive and we can say that this person feels good at their work. However, if we look at number six, our, it says worst possible place to work, bad leadership, miserable coworkers, I hate it here. I really hope this service are anonymous. So we can immediately tell that this person is having a really bad time at work and we want to do something about it. However, um, you know, looking at all of the employees, looking at all the surveys, we want an automated way for us to um, look into it and identify those people that um, are using positive or negative language and for us to identify that and ultimately do something not only uh, more effectively, but faster, right? We want to act fast specifically because we don't want this person to um, leave. So, um, as we see here, this is the nutrition flag. So again, this means has this person quit. Uh, number two, they are still with us, but in number six, they quit. So based on the comments, it's very intuitive for us to uh, realize that, you know, that data makes sense. But now we want to go forward and utilize uh, advanced analytics in order for us to operationalize um, this specific um, you know, the starting of words uh, in a much more um, organized and a methodical way. So let's go back into um, Statistica. And now we're looking at uh, the text mining data. 
So uh, in here, uh, we're looking at uh, our data again, and we're following up with um, what the, the concept means. So, um, sorry, I'll wrong click. Right. So uh, I'm gonna go into the text mining uh, editing app by itself. So this is how uh, we are able to configure um, the different types of not of nodes that we have um, as part of the model, and we are able to identify and select what words are specific for us. So then in here we have phrases that are important for us, stop words that are important for us, and inclusion words that are important. So um, just as a quick note, since you know Sapphire, um, since uh, Tipco is a global company, um, we are also supporting other languages. In this case, uh, we have an English stop list, but you can do this, for example, in Portuguese. Um, we only have to input whatever um, word list is needed for us, and we can uh, bring it over. So then, once we run it, we're able to see the sentiment node. So with the sentiment node, we are able to uh, put a semantic rating into the comment that we have. So if you remember, we have um, the responder number two, where we are looking at a very interesting place to work, executive team is very cooperative, and then now we are giving them the stop words and seeing exactly what's happening. Um, so, so let's go back into number two and number six. So let's look at both of them at the same time. So if we go into the words, we see, uh, for example, the word uh, cooperative, and number two has a tally. If we're looking at uh, other types of word, for example, uh, miserable, we have a tally in number six. Um, and if we have, for example, the, wor the word uh, worst, we have another tally in number six. So we have positive and negative words associated in Statistica that we are able to code how we see in, in the concept, and we are able to give it a semantic rating. For example, in number two, we have a tally of one semantic rating, and it gives us one semantic positive rating. Whereas in number six, we have four, um, and it gives us a negative semantic uh, rating of minus four. So then now um, the computer understands it, we're able to code it, and now we're able to, you know, give it into a ranges that it's able to be assembled right now. However, we want to give it a little bit into um, the, um, that understanding back into humans. So then let's go and code this specific information using our uh, rules node. So then now with this one semantic rating of positive, we can give it either a neutral, positive, or very positive feel, or for example, in the answer of number six, uh, it's a very negative feel because it has multiple negative semantic ratings. Whereas uh, in number two, we only tallied one, so we're gonna give it an overall a positive feel. Um, just as a side note with rules, uh, we can do a lot of different types of rules in uh, Statistica, uh, but for example, giving exactly uh, what we mean for uh, the coding in terms of integers, uh, that is an example of what we can do with rules. But it can also be, it goes above an average, it goes below average, it goes above the limit, et cetera. All right. So, uh, so far we have wrapped up what we have of text mining, and we are able to not only code and standardize uh, this comment section, but we're also able to make it a lot more understanding for us to ultimately um, look at the specific uh, distribution of either very negative to very positive fields. Um, Statistica also has available uh, some um, visual analytics and here we're able to see um, the percentage of neutral positive very positive very negative and negative fields however if we want to you know bring it back to stop fire we can make this a lot more interactive than just um it, this visual analytics that we see here all right so 
Um, now we go into the machine learning portion where we are able to have advanced classification J trees and booster classification trees that we're ultimately passing through a PMML model uh, for us to um, bring our test data. So in here, we're looking at historical data. So we have already coded if this person um, is still with a company or quit. Uh, whereas in the test data, this information um, is basically future information. So we're training our model in order for us to give the prediction. Um, as, after we pass it with the advanced classification and the basic classification trees and our test data, we're able to uh, run this model through rapid deployment by simply clicking here. Um, and it will pass it through the text mining all the way to rules, all the way to classification trees. They would add the test data and we finally get our reporting documents with our, um, with our results of our predictive models. So, to cut to the chase and look at exactly what's happening in terms of prediction, we here we have our attrition flag. So basically, has this person um, is stay with us or they left in terms of historical data, and then we pass it into the booster classification tree prediction and the advanced classification CADE uh, prediction, where um, we're able to see if our um, specific model is correct or incorrect depending on the historical information. Or, and um, also, we are able to finally see the voted prediction. So not only we're looking at specific models, but then Statistica also allows us to compare those models and give us a voted prediction of if this person is going to stay with the company or they are at risk of quitting. Um, so then uh, we are able to see exactly what's happening with um, that voted prediction. So then in here we see, for example, 41, that we have a flag of this person um, being at risk of leaving uh, through uh, the voted prediction. So um, now that we are wrapping up onto what we did in Statistica, um, we already did the text mining, we already did machine learning, we did the prediction, uh, now we're ready to share our results uh, with upper management or with our team. So then let's go back into Spotify. So um, again, the statistics and Spotify are, um, are integrated with each other. Um, so that means that we can talk, uh, make Spotify and Statistica talk to each other either through a data function, um, a data function or um, just importing and exporting values, depending on where you are. So obviously importing and exporting values is very easy to do. Uh, and that's what we did today uh, for, you know, having quick answers um, into Spotify. So in here, we're looking at the distribution of our employee sentiment. It looks exactly the same as we saw it in Statistica. We have a neutral field of 39%. Uh, a very positive of 26.9% and positive of 16.9. So again, overall, our employees are happy and we can look exactly on, you know, how to see this uh, people are feeling depending on the role and if there's something specific about it. However, what we are is very interested in today is this very negative feel because we are interested in the people who are not happy in our, um, in our company and we want to make uh, something for the either to you know keep them or make a transition um, easier and also make changes in our um, you know make, make changes in our business for us to have happy sorry happy uh, employees and have more uh, effective environment around them. So in here, we're looking at the very negative, which is 13.2%. Uh, and then we're looking at the job role. Overall, we have individual contributors with 43, the team leads at 25, regional managers at 19, et cetera. And then it goes um, below. Now, uh, we are able to pinpoint exactly uh, what the person is saying uh, for them to have a very negative feel. And then we can go back into the respondent ID and identify why does this person overall feel is feeling very negative. So then again, we find our 
um, our person, number six, which is, they said, this is the worst possible place to work at leadership, miserable worker workers. I hate it here. I really hope they serve as anonymous. So then in here, you know, this person is very unhappy. We identified through um, already, not only just um, by looking at every single person, but then now we're looking at, at this person again and we find them uh, through a category where we can laser focus on this specific group of people and we can um, be more effective in the way that we respond to how they're feeling. Now uh, we see the worst possible place to work and can we do something about it? I don't know, maybe this person is way above something that we can do. However, this person down here is, I'm worried about the new product, my manager ignores and yells at me, and the point of deviation is wrong. So, you know, this person, we can actually talk to them and be like, hey, tell me about what's happening with this new product. Talk to the manager and be like, hey, maybe you need to, um, we need to put them in a place where they need to do um, some training to, in order to have better communication with um, the people who are underneath them. Uh, maybe a leadership seminar for this person for them to uh, find those better communication uh, strategies. So then um, we actually have the answer um, of we have um, what is wrong and we can actually uh, go and do something about it to fix it. All right, so with this, um, we were looking at uh, this specific uh, use case of attrition and what we can do for us to, you know, keep our employees happy and look at them in uh, how they're feeling overall in, in our work environment. We saw text analytics, we saw machine learning, both of them through typical data science, and we brought that information back into Spotfire in order for us to uh, communicate our answers in an interactive and visual manner. So um, to that, and then I guess we are opening up for uh, questions. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, be sure to post them in the Q and A or in the chat. Um, and we will we'll get to those questions for you. I wanted to um, say how happy I am to have this presentation. I really appreciate this, Monica. This is something we've been wanting to do for a while: is show the capabilities of Spotfire with some other products. Uh, to show how you can expand Spotfire and expand uh, the capabilities of Spotfire with some other tools um, in the TIBCO stack um, and, and work better together. Um, this is something we want to do uh, occasionally. Uh, we won't do this in every session, but we, we're going to start doing occasionally in Dr. Spotfire, maybe once a quarter, to show how to expand Spotfire with other tools. Um, and to that end, uh, Monica, just a quick question. So this analysis you did, this great analysis you did on sentiment analysis, could you have done this in TEAR? Yes, absolutely. Um, so whatever we can do with R, we can absolutely do it in uh, Spotfire. So then all this text analytics and machine learning, we're also able to do it uh, in TEAR. Uh, and we do actually have a cramp package for text mining. So then, you know, it's ready to use. That's great. That's great. And I, and I think it also, it, it helps. Um, so you can do it in tear and you can use these, these cram packages uh, from R. Um, but I think the advantage of having Statistica is that it allows you to not have to manage all the code. You can just create a quick workflow with these notes, have this no code and low code environment. So you have options here. You can, you know, the analysis you already do in Spotfire. Um, you may be able to take that into Statistica and expand it and manage it a little bit uh, better if you want. And um, uh, one, one thing I wanted to hammer in from what Monica mentioned towards the end is the uh, Statistica data function. So what's happening here is more than just Statistica outputting a file and Spotfire reading it. Um, it, it wasn't like really shown in this demo, but it's actually a, a two-way street where uh, Statistica can also be picking up inputs from Spotfire. So you are uh, able to interact with your data in Spotfire, change different uh, parameters, have that go into Statistica, um, rerun those models. You, you can then revisualize your outputs and you have this whole closed loop. So um, the user may never even see the Statistica model. This is a way so, for uh, data scientists uh, or advanced uh, analysts to get their models out to the rest of 
uh, their organization. So, um, so I just wanted to point out that it is more than just exporting this file, uh, this data, this file. Um, it is kind of a two-way street. Um, and Monica, I wondered if you could go a little bit on that sentiment note. I um, liked what you were showing with how um, the analyst can set uh, different sentiments and positive and negative. And you were showing the um, the comment breakdowns and um, the, the different words that were used and how those words are ranked. So if a user was doing this, what would what would be the manual part that the user would have to do? And then what would Statistica be doing automatically? Yeah, so um, basically what's happening here is that uh, we have all these um, words that have been identified previously. Um, so uh, just as a, a little bit of a disclaimer, um, Nath Manamala was, was the one who uh, actually did um, this specific uh, node. Uh, so he knows the very you know, ins and outs of it. However, um, when we go into our text mining uh, node, um, we are able to find um, specific files um, where we are able to bring phrases, stop list, and inclusion words. So then in here, uh, we have already identified ahead of time manually um, what types of words that we want. And again, this is not 100% manual. We can bring them from bank words. We can bring it from you know other historical analysis that we have done previously. Um, we simply are going to input this file in order for um, Statistica to identify which are the important words. Now with the sentiment node, uh, what it does is that it's going to basically tally every single one of the words that we have identified as important, uh, depending on um, what would be uh, this specific column, which would be number seven, uh, as we have inputted into our node. And then uh, once it tallies it up, uh, it will um, put it into Da, da, da. let's bring it over, um, it will bring it into a concept. So then this specific word has a concept um, weight. So for example, the concept number one, which would be word number one, it has um, you know, a, a zero weight or a negative weight or a positive weight. So uh, once that concept has given itself a weight and it tells it up and then multiplies it by how many how many times has that word appeared in the sentence, then that's how we get the semantic rating. And then after we get the semantic rating, which is an, um, not an absolute value, but it is just um, a value that has not given either, um, what's it called, like a, a category yet. Um, after that, we give the category saying if it's positive or negative. Now with the sentiment analysis, uh, with the sentiment note, I'm sorry. So then that's what uh, we are able to do uh, with Statistica, what part is manual or semi-manual, uh, and then what the Statistica does by itself. So then um, all the models that we have in here, they're all ready to go. We're simply going to configure them and give them exactly what we want out of that uh, node. But when we're trying to you know, do this from scratch in other places, we do have to write the code. In this case, we don't write any type of code. Okay, that's, that's really interesting. So it does, it does a lot for us there. Um, I had a user question here on how were the stop and other related files created uh, when you first opened the text fields on Statistica? So um, I think this is related to the, uh, the stop rules with the different languages that you showed. So how, how was that? Yeah, um, so great question. I actually don't know, um, but that is absolutely a question that I can ask my uh, colleague and we can back, get back to you on that. Okay. And I had a user asking if Spotfire generated the score from the employee notes or was it included in the underlying data at the beginning? I think the answer oh, is it created, it created it from the, the notes itself, right? So. Um, yes. The scores were not baked into this data going through this workflow is where those, those scores were generated, right? Yes, exactly. 
Okay, well, um, I see a lot of questions here, um, but we are actually over time. We are uh, trying to keep Dr. Spotfire to um, to 30 minutes, and so we're about 10 minutes over. Um, just a, a couple quick notes on where you can find this stuff. Let me see if I can uh, share my screen real quick. So just a, a couple quick notes that you can find this session um, online um, within one month. It'll be on our on-demand page. Um, you can find this on our community page, our Dr. Spotfire community page. I'll show you in a second. Um, so for a month, you'll be able to view this recording there. And after a month, um, you'll be able to find it on our YouTube page. And make sure to subscribe to that YouTube page. There's a whole playlist here. Um, we uh, won't have time for questions Q&A today, but if you do have questions, post them on the community with the hashtag Dr. Spotfire. Uh, tweet it with the hashtag Dr. Spotfire. Email us. If you have sensitive data, you can email us directly at drspotfire.tipco.com, and we'll answer your questions um, individually. Uh, some of the questions that are left open uh, from today's session, uh, we will uh, post online on a community page, so just keep an eye out for that. We'll post on the Dr. Spotfire page and try to to get to all these great questions, a lot of good questions today. Um, this reminder, Tipco Community has lots of resources for you. So uh, there's the wiki page, there's uh, lots of use cases and extensions, things like that. Um, and uh, I mentioned I would show this page. This is our Dr. Spotfire uh, wiki page on our Tipco Community. Um, at the bottom, you'll see all the different uh, sessions that we have, the upcoming session, the on-demand sessions and then the YouTube recording. So uh, check this page and we'll try to get to all your questions, um, post them online. But thank you for joining today and uh, we will uh, see you next time where we are going to do a session on streaming analytics and Spotfire 10.